I'm going over to my dad's house before the conference to talk about why I'm campaigning against FGM, telling everyone else they shouldn't practice FGM while I haven't had that conversation with my family. It looks a bit hypocritical. Having this conversation with my dad is part of having a bigger conversation with the whole Gambian community. Today is the beginning of Idul Adha, the festival of sacrifice. My family will be celebrating. But I have to tell my father about my campaign. All the girls in my family have been cut. It's something we've never spoken about. I thought there was a lot that I could tell him, but you know he's a religious man and I just couldn't sit there and tell him what you're saying is not the truth because it would have angered him. It's important to keep the conversation going because my dad has a lot of daughters and they have a lot of daughters as well. If my dad changes his mind, a lot of girls can be saved. I'll go to say hi to everyone. Having the first national youth conference to end FGM in the Gambia. Hi, Nayinda. It's like the coolest thing I think I've ever done. Social media. Do your For you to be able to go abroad, learn something, and then take that and bring it back to your home country and help your own people. That's how things should be. Hi, Amadou. Good. Well, today is the opening of the conference. If he can come here, so he sees the atmosphere, sees you know what this whole thing is about, I think it will be good for the story. Program, we'll go get that. T-shirt for me, small. You guys are okay, right? Ready to go? We invited veteran activists from all the organizations in the Gambia, prominent people from the UN, people from the government. We are working with the American government, now I want to work with my own government. So I'm glad you're here. So the doors are open. And this has never happened in the Gambia. They've never came together to work on one goal. Those are my kids, they came to see the opening. That's my son. And that's my daughter right there. Yeah, I'm to be. Well, they try to be. <laughs> um, Mohammed, you guys need to sit with Daddy, okay? When I first started talking about FGM, for one, I was afraid. I'm a Sarahule, and I didn't know what my family would think. I didn't know what the outcome would be. But I was lucky to have, you know, a husband that understands how passionate I am about these issues. And um, 
I'm very, very pleased that the Gambian government is here because I think that in order for us to achieve change, we need you guys to help us do that. We need to empower our girls and we need to make sure that no girl child is at risk of FGM in this country. Female genital mutilation makes it much more likely for you to have complications. If you just look at maternal mortality and you find out what high numbers we have in the Gambia, time and time and time again we have people dying. It is all due to ignorance. And what you guys are doing is the beginning of the fight against that ignorance. Let's go on to the next slide, please. This is a real picture. I saw this lady myself in my clinic. This girl was about 26 years old, married for about two, three years, didn't have a child, and was convinced by the relatives that the reason you're not having a child is because you were not cut. So they went to this old lady who used a razor blade under no form of anesthesia. And they removed, as you can see, the clitoris and part of the labia minora. This lady knew nothing about anatomy. She just cut down. And when she cut down, she also cut the urethra, which is the opening that passes the urethra. She will be having lots of infections in her life that may destroy her kidneys finally. And this girl's sexual life has been totally destroyed. Now it is our time to defend the rights of our women. I know what, I will make that vow here. Nobody will ever take my quota to be circumcised. Critical that we always use euphemism. We can't continue to tell people that you samba nyakato bariya chupotile wale ma kuntu men kake wolo akakuntu le akaboyele alna fonyo eko. It's been mutilated. We don't have to be ashamed of our body. Clitoris ni aben na vaginal to ya bondi ye ya kuntu le iman nama iman chupoti iman kuntu le. What motivated you to start this campaign? To me, it's something that needed to be done because even in the U.S., it's like a taboo. No one was willing to talk about it openly. Do you think the gov there is sufficient political will on the part of the government? We are here to hold them accountable, but we want to work in partnership with them. If they don't help us, we can't achieve what we want. You know, the real movers, the real you know, changes of public opinion are the imams. And even the imam of the president, Imam Fadi, he said FGM is Islamic. I've heard Imam Faji's claims. He's an elder and I respect him, but I went through FGM and I know how it affects me. And if he needs me to sit down and talk to him about that, I'm open to that. What would be the pinnacle of achievement? If we can get a national ban on FGM in the Gambia, that would, you know, that would be it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you of government's commitment in providing technical support for the implementation of the outcome and recommendations of this meeting. For me, it was important to have the government in front of international media, in front of local media. Will you guys help promote for a national ban against FGM? If we make this a priority, we can actually end FGM in less than 10 years. If we have data coming from the country to say, this is the magnitude of the problem that our women are going through, obviously, we will do something about it. Now we have something to hold them accountable for. The government has raised the argument that there's not a lot of research, but we have the information out there. I've been through FGM. That was in circumcision, that was in cutting, that was female genital mutilation. I am one. I am and I am, I, am I, am I am one. When you're here and you see that over two thirds of the women in this country have been through a FGM, it's not just some bunch of scientific numbers. You can see them, you can feel them, you can hear them. Your last message to the people of the Gambia. I hope they welcome this, and I hope they understand that I'm, I'm not abandoning my culture. I'm a proud Gambian. I love my culture. But it's just this part of our culture. It's wrong. There's no right.
when it comes to changing people's minds, it's going to be extremely hard. But we need to have a huge campaign and travel to every single village and actually have these conversations.